Hey YouTube, Copper Sand here. Today we're going to be answering the age-old question, is MapleStory a single-player MMORPG? The answer to that question is actually quite simple. So, is MapleStory a single-player MMO? Well, yes, but also no, not really. Especially MapleStory players who played the game during its first decade or so remember the endless amount of time spent together in party quests, grinding together and later grinding together in those party play zones. MapleStory was very party play centered in the first decade or so of its lifetime. If you weren't grinding and bossing together with others, your progress would be slower and endgame bosses were simply impossible to solo. The progression of your character was tied to party play. Without others, your progression would slow down, as PQs gave a huge amount of EXP and grinding was slow and tedious. With the introduction of party play zones, where having more party members in your party meant having a huge bonus in EXP, party play maps became the go-to grind spots soon after their release. For the last 8 years or so though, there was a shift in the MapleStory meta where your character's leveling progression was detached from your ability to play with other people. Grinding is now exclusively done by yourself. As skills kept getting bigger and players their mobility kept improving, it became possible to clear an entire map by yourself, so having a party member in there would actually slow both of you down, even in the more modern party play zones. This meta shift also resulted in party quests becoming obsolete. While you can still complete party quests, and there are still groups doing this, it is by no means a fast way to level up and became more of a funny side content with some unique rewards type of activity. Grinding is where you'll spend most of your time on in MapleStory. Besides wondering what it was all for when you blow up your items, which is most likely my second biggest MapleStory activity, just pondering about that in Hennessy's. But this does mean that most of your time playing this grindy game, you'll be playing alone. Grinding away in a map until you can move on to the next one. Party play has been removed almost completely out of the equation and won't affect your leveling speed whatsoever. However, this is not where the story ends. Yes, party play has been almost completely removed out of the leveling meta. However, it is almost impossible to progress in this game without partying up and befriending other MapleStory players. Just like since its inception, when it comes to completing boss content, party play is a must, especially for those Maplers who are looking for the next item upgrade in their gear progression. While it is getting easier to solo early game bosses, and bosses which were end game before are getting easier and easier to defeat thanks to power creep, the current mid and especially end game bosses are basically impossible to solo from the get go. Sure, they can be soloed once you're giga funded as an end game player, but reaching that point will literally take years for most. Mid and end game bosses are always exclusively fought in parties for most maplers. It is possible to get stronger on your own and solo these bosses by yourself eventually, but this is extremely inefficient and will hinder your progress significantly. So while not entirely impossible, it will be very challenging and time consuming to go that route. It could be fun for a YouTube challenge series perhaps. But the party content doesn't just end at defeating boss monsters together for better gear. Ursus, for example, is a huge source of mesos for Maplers who are just starting out. With double the rewards being available only certain times during the day, this boss is almost done exclusively in a raid party. However, there is also the option to go in solo by yourself once you're strong enough. The same goes for your early Arcane symbol progression. Each area in the Arcane River has special quests that need to be completed to gain symbols which players need to upgrade to deal sufficient damage to the monsters in this area. For the first two areas in the whole Arcane River, the special quests can be done both in a party or solo, which is extremely helpful for Maplers who are just starting out and will have trouble clearing these quests by themselves. Guilds also have a bigger role than before when it comes to min-maxing your progression. Being in a guild not just has the benefit of finding a bossing party easier, being in a guild also grants access to guild skills, with passive benefits that can help you level faster, save mesos or grunt you attack buffs, and active skills that can help you greatly while clearing boss fights. And you can add the recently added guild castle content on top of that as well. Monster Park Extreme is also one of those more recently added party play zones. Here players level 260 and above have to defeat monsters to summon a boss monster, which then has to be defeated before it teleports away. However, this content can also be done solo and not just in a party, so if you are strong enough, you can solo it and no longer have to rely on that party play. This content gives EXP, and while not doing it won't be the end of the world, it does give a really nice chunk of EXP for those higher level maplers. 
The only party quest that is still actively done is the Amoria party quest, as this content will reward you with Onyx Apples, which gives an insane boost in attack for a short while, but you have to be married to participate in this PQ. So, yes, compared to the older metas, you'll be spending a lot less time together with other maplers. Playing together has been mostly detached from grinding and leveling up your character. Most party play will happen at boss fights, and those boss fights have become such a big part of your progression that playing together is still extremely important as you would expect from an MMORPG. You'll be playing together a lot less though compared to like a decade ago. What do you think of the way party related content is in the game right now? Would you like to see more of it? I think it would be great if they would buff the EXP and rewards from PQ so that this could also be a viable option to level up early game characters besides just grinding in the same maps over and over. But let me know what you think in the comments. And that was all I had for today. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to... Niels de Konik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Kali Mora, Wiley, Riser Aryu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Safronix, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Suratito655, Michael Manchaka, Rathius, Afterlord, Betrayal1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tidal One Fun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Ben on Games, The Passenger, Kani Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukau1017, BNB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Eck, Feco, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matinu Def, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Facile, Spots the Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandau, Snuffu Pop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Drake, Gaber Wolf, Live Love Maple Story, Kali, Duckfoos, Quinn, Migu, and Mark Set. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.